You see, if you look back from 90, it's a very longer time. You see, I can't go back now. I can take myself back I, as I am now. Or well, look back, or whatever we like to say. But I can't go and be the child I was. No way. It's not possible. I'm here. And I'm looking at, at towards some kind of end somewhere or other. And, and uh, the beginning, God knows. I'm, I'm curious, you see, in my nature and in my, my trade, as it were, I'm picking up bits, these, what is it, something I store against my ruins. Part of me loves to receive the world in a sort of accidents and even music to go through a street and, and a window is opened and something comes over through the radio or you go to go to Aston, Colorado and there's a string quartet sitting on the pavement playing and then the, you know, the lorries, come, trucks come through and they stop playing late Beethoven and when that's gone out of the way they begin again. Well, that's a new way of performing. Those images that yet Fresh images beget. Come on. I reach for them. Sometimes I touch them. Sometimes I can, I can describe them. But there I, we have to find the first. Sir Michael, the technological, the scientific changes this century have transformed the world unimaginably. I wonder, has there been one single invention that's changed your life? Changed my life? Not one single technological invention, invention, a whole crash of them one way or another. No, the answer is no, it isn't one single. If you want me to enumerate them, that's more difficult, because I can't remember exactly when they all happened. Well, when railways changed to aeroplanes, oh, much more important, is the, the, the dream that there used to be, my dad had it, coming from God knows how far back, that there would be a channel tunnel. Curious business. Took a long time, never happened. And so, uh, as children, we had to I was long for some technical invention that would uh, give me how I didn't have to cross the channel and be seasick. I mean, I'm not seasick now, I only cross the channel in an aeroplane. Mm -hmm. It's a good going. Are you going to go on the channel? Is it something that interests you? No. No, I can't get onto trains now. I can't climb into them and out of them and therefore it's rather pointless. Partial fact, I can't see out of the tunnels, or I know. <coughs> no, no, the answer is no. I love trains, but the train, the sales of the train age for me is gone. Growing up before the First World War, you lived in a small country village. What wasn't there that you have now? Well, w well, the real things that weren't there is what we're doing now. There wasn't television, there wasn't radio, there wasn't discs. So communications were very 
odd. In fact, I don't quite know how it was done, because I remember girls coming up, to, I've said it, told this many times, who coming up to, you know, in, in the little garden and singing to me the latest uh, what was, uh, songs from Alexander's ragtime band. They were ragtime songs, and everybody's doing it. But what I've been wondering since often is what, how they got it. I have no idea, because apparently nothing ever came into the village at all. The motor car was there because my dad had one. He was a, he was a, a, an absolute uh, fanatic on early motor cars and had one called a De Dion Bouton, which had a, which had a peculiar cylinder to it. All I know, and you could hear it about a mile off because it made a particularly ring. But my memory memory of that is every so often it was taken into the to the local where well, we went to the local market. I mean, that's to say, Stow Market, and there was all markets in East Anglia. I mean, and there we usually went in in on you know in a, what they call a pony and trap. I think I don't remember when we were, when he actually went in on and we all got into the car. At least the boys did. Well, only to my brother and myself, is um, it didn't get very far, it seemed to me. It always seemed we just break down on the slightest incline. And he got out and got uh, under the car, fiddled around, and we went and played in the ditches on either side. There's no one else on the road. Well, it isn't like that now. <laughs> That's quite clear. I often wonder what keeps you going. Keeps me going. Mm. Oh, yeah. in a sort of vitality which came from my papa, I should think. He was there with an old, long-lived family. Very, they both were. And what are the amusing about my parents, which after all where I began, I couldn't choose them. They chose mother, because they did in a big way. They, is that they both had different views. One believed that you should have no medications, which was my mother. And my father, he believed you should try everything, so he had to, everybody's medication was in the house. They both lived till late 80s, so it seemed to me it didn't matter which you did. I've lived like that ever since, according to what I'm given. If you give me medication, I should take it up to a point, no further. Okay? Where did you start being a maverick? I love this word that you used about yourself. God knows, I should think from the word go. <laughs> I mean, I... I mean, all I know is that as a kid, I was known, to, um, and so I found the only two of us, my brother and my mother and father. See, I was not called the non-stop, because I never stopped talking. And it was thought that I would make a very good lawyer, not a lawyer, uh, 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 you know, in, in, actually in the court itself, a barrister. barrister, and would restore the family fortunes. Great agony, but it didn't happen, come up like that. Did you, instead, you, um... Oh, I had to fight my way with my parents, I don't have to get there at all. Did you like your parents? Up to a point. The point, really, that, that knocked me out with my parents was, it seemed to see the fact that, that uh, it was, I was, first of all, sent quite early, nine years old, to boarding school. And, I, and therefore I lost my parents. I realised that wasn't going to be. I was. It was very. I was very not only grieved, heartbroken, and I never got it back. Well, the third generation of your family who's been inside, which is, I think, very interesting. I've been inside. Yes, my and your mother was inside. My mother was inside, but she was inside in the good old days in a woman's prison. And there's no nonsense about that, because they, they were what it was called then, middle class. Why was she in prison? I, I have a feeling that your mother is... Well, she was a feminist, in her, as well as being God knows everything else under the sun, as it were. Did your mother have a great influence on you politically? Is there, is there Me some politically. Sort of thread there? Because yes, it is. The thread is... Yes, absolutely. This is a curious thing. It is there. What it is... The you see, I mean, as I put it in a quoting myself in the opera, I mean, 
as I my parents, I mean blood of their blood, bone of their bone. What then is me that was not them? I don't know. But something was, and that is me. And it's a thread that's been there all the, all the time. I, I mean, none of us know, I don't think. I don't know. It was a fantastically exciting period. You either went over the top just to have fun, which I have plenty of pictures of the time of the idiocy that people got up, young people got up to, or you, or you, and other things were were there. And and I, mean, I didn't go in for that. I didn't want it, but I wanted, I wanted the Colonel de Basil ballet and, and oh I don't know to see these I suppose I saw the last of of, of Jagilev's young men that was Massim dancing Petrushka and you don't forget it mind you that's the music too but I can see it now and then this you know the, the end final scene when it's it's really a straw figure at the bottom being pulled off by the man and there's this figure up the top roaring with laughter and a wonderful <laughs> from the orchestra. Oh. I can see it now, I see it in the air, it's there. There were two ways of going really after the First World War, the Great War. She, there was one was to live on and out, you know, is this, is this someone on the Marx Brothers, which is wonderful, out of this great confusion, I made my grand illusion. I felt I had to make that grand illusion out of the confusion. And there were those in the artistic world, if I to which I knew I belonged by then, see, th who, who went, who said it's all, it's all bogus, the whole lot, and went into what what was known as Dada, and that had its... Well, when they really got going, it was really very amu amusing in a way, but less than amusing in other ways. I, re I remember André Breton or somebody, one of them, coming from Paris, and he got, he got into a diving bell or something. No, he got into some sort of... And was you know his head was strapped in and he was it was to show how what a ridiculous world it was. But then unfortunately they couldn't get it open, and there was a lovely grand ado. Well, I would roll. I'm afraid I would laugh at that. I'm, but I didn't go the way of Dada. That was impossible to me. Now I can't tell you why. It just was. I had something positive inside, if that is the word I dare use, and. That, uh, that f understanding that, it, that there was a shadow world as well as a light world was very slow. And didn't really come to, to you now, went in for personal analysis, and that's my own story. But in a century of great doubts, where, who was it said that God yes, is dead? Nietzsche, right. wasn't it? I beg your pardon? Who was it who said that God is dead? Was it Nietzsche? Nietzsche. You, you, so you have nothing. What do you, how do you find what do you, you have nothing? We have ourselves. How, but that's awfully difficult. I beg your pardon? It's awfully difficult. Of course it is. I, didn't say it, I never said it was easy. On the contrary. That is why if well, the idea of God or whatever is a comfort, I don't think I could try and persuade somebody not to have it. I think the, ne the living uh, in... Uh, the great confusion, literally, and you know, building the great illusion, and illusion is probably the word.
Was there a particular philosophy, thinker, who um, had some significance for you? Oh, I mean, the person who had the most significance in the, se in the personal sense was you. I suppose I needed, uh, or, uh, as you say, a philosophy of some kind, or, uh, it, but there was also, I went to Jung originally, and, and uh, or Jungianism, simply because I had a personal problem. You only go to therapy if you're in, in trouble, and I was in trouble, all right, that's all right. And, and I thought I would, I mean, it's just a problem of being, being gay, or whatever we call it, and not being a, a social norm. Not and being out, either. What? Not being out. Well, it wasn't like that. This is long way, what is this, is 19, I don't know what it is, before the... I mean, she was still illegal and all the rest of it. It didn't make, we, we, we all disregarded the law. We had to, because it was our natures. But then now you, I wanted to get to the point when I probably could resolve it in terms of coming to, of, of accepting the social condition and the norm and all the rest of it. Well, you, I, I then, but Jung produced a, a method of which, which he said was applicable, in which anybody who really wanted to do it could help himself or herself by by. Um, noting the dreams, open, uh, letting the dreams break open, the whole unconsciously would say break open, and you have a dialogue between what is, ha, is generally called your, your conscious self, if that is right, self-conscious self, and your, your unconscious self, if there is such a thing. And these are all jargons, and this <coughs> jargon rather suited me, and also the experience of doing it. Nine months of it, and, and you know, and the, and the whole, and, and it is an odd experience. You, you, the whole of the interior breaks open. I can only put it that way, and, and the dreams flood in night after night. And these, you can s watch them, and from, from, as it were, from the outside, and see them change. And it re it's released something in me, it released a stymie, if you like. So you could compose better work as yes, well? Yes, that's right. You have more control, possibly, of, of your emotional... Your emotional life remains. As Jung himself said, there's whatever you do, there's always a hair in the soup. Indeed. And all he really said was that in the great storm that goes on all the time, in, in all life, you... you you can hold to some kind of balance is a risky word, but you you somehow can uh, have a uh, as it were an imaginary quiet space where you where you can be. You can be whoever you is. It's a, you, all the questions come floating up which can't be answered at all. You have said, "Be who you are. Be what you are." No, that was, no, no, that was what the interior or the unconscious said through dream after dream after dream. So it had to be accepted, though I didn't, I was, wanted to come out married. Or oh, I thought I did, or whatever I am, but it refused. So there are wonderful dreams in which it's clear that it's the other, something else is there until you accept. Were you ever close to a woman? Oh yes, indeed. All through, I'm just kidding, all through my life. I mean, in a way, when Francesca Allison I was closer to than almost anybody, it's not quite true, but, uh, but it was a strange, tender, extremely tender, gentle relationship. And of course she took her life, eventually. It's very difficult talk about her because, uh, you know, she leaves a note behind to me. On her suicide? Yes, and to her woman friend. And she, I mean, well, keep a place warm for me in your heart. So, and that is where it was, that was the heart, not the head. Well, she was not here. Anyhow, that's a rather a closed book, love. I can't go very far down that road. Yes, the answer, main thing is, 
I've always wanted a cup of women as well as that of men. Do you regret not having a family? Part of it, yes. I have said so, that I, some part of me, and I used to put it in rather dramatic terms, a word I got from a warden, I think, is that it seemed to me like a wound. But of course, it, uh, as somebody rightly wrote to me, I think it was Neville Mariner, wrote a nice card when this came out, and said, um, well, you're one of the most cheerful walk, walking wounded I ever met. <laughs> We sort of put the right uh, sense on it. But you do get very moved by the plight of children and, uh, and people oh, yes. touch you. I would have l loved, you know, some part of me to have children, I suppose, but I'm not sure whether I wanted children of my own body or s somebody else's. It wasn't, never, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> so it was always someone else's children. Well, I never... I've no possessive of anybody or anything much, except myself. In the Second War, you were a conscientious objector and you made a deliberate stand for it. But haven't you always been a committed pacifist? Well, there are people like myself who got it from the First World War. We felt the carnage should never be repeated. And therefore we were always asking the question, you know, um, what was all the carnage for? And what did it do? What did it achieve? But that war is gone, and we've had another one, and I don't know. And then we had the Cold War, which was, in, was, was worse. But this isn't this isn't the, quite the, po the the point. You you can't believe that I could never. T and I try always to re explain that I understood that when people, you know, and composers of my generation went off to war, they went off with very often with as high a moral ground as I theoretically had in going to going to work with scrubs. It's one thing being a pacifist and signing something like the Peace Pledge Union, you know. I, that kind I of signed it but forgot I had, of course, being me. You could have avoided prison by doing other other work, yes, ambulance driving could. or whatever. Yeah, but I didn't see why it, I didn't think and after all I knew perfectly well that there was I knew more about it than, than the, the lady I'd, I'd helped others in who had been and had been to visit them in Wilmot's Cross. I knew what it was like. So you were a kind of example as well. Well, they were younger people and it seemed to me wrong that they should get it in the neck. And if they were under 21, they went to Borstal. Mm. And that was not a nice thing to go to during the war and how. Mm. So I, in the end, I, I simply said, dug my heels in and said, no, I have the right not 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 to do any of these things. You felt your work was, was... Well, because it was absurd. That seemed to be a, 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 a hypocrisy of the first order, and I ain't, wasn't going to do it. I had the stubbornness. I simply said, that, thank you very much. I shall go to prison, and that, that'll settle that. And now, of course, had its funny sides as well as its grim sides. Thank <laughs> you.
altered my view of the world. No, I think it was altered the world. Yeah. And that's what I should say, say with the, with the uh, it has to be said, the dropping of the atom bomb because the splitting of the atom. The splitting of the atom produced something which nobody had ever foreseen at all. They didn't themselves foresee when they did it. And, there, and then once that, the genie was out of the bottle, they couldn't put it back. No one can. And therefore you would have, we've had to live with it. But the living with it has altered everybody's way of... Now, well, I beg your pardon. I know everybody's I big term, but you know what I mean. I think you know what I mean. And, and so everything begins to take on a, a, a negative that is of immense dimensions. Oh, no, nothing can quite alter that. Well, it can't alter it, and it's really... It, Changed everything, I would have said. Did you actually, I mean, when the bomb went off in Hiroshima, mm -hmm. what happened? I wasn't around, but what, what was the, was the, he was totally ill? Or oh, to me? Disgusted, yes, you personally. Oh, I, I, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. I read it in the News Chronicle headline, I just did not take it in. I thought it's impossible, because even then it was clear what had happened. I mean, the more the interesting figure was was um, uh, Einstein. You see, Einstein was himself horrified, but he 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 couldn't give up his feeling that it was all right. God somehow would be all feel it was all right. And they did something which is so impossible. We can't hurt, we cannot take it in. It's there to see if you go to the museum. In Hiroshima, and there it is, and that is as a, as a as a sort of piece of concrete. It was in fact a concrete seat of some kind, and it was in 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 the little in the town. And and it's thought that a woman was came out and sat in the morning when the thing went off. It went off, you know, up above, and it it at once the incineration appeared to be immediate and total. But it, there isn't such a thing as immediacy. And in fact, the necessity of reducing her to nothing was a, produced a shadow. And the shadow is on the stone. You can go and see it. And, all you, and, and you realize that human beings could be reduced to a shadow. All sorts of efforts have been made to it makes all realize but we've had to live live with it. <laughs> Society in, in England, for example, has become polyglot to a great degree, which I love. I always wanted that. As somebody put it, I think it's on television somewhere or other. The Empire Strikes Back. <laughs> The blues mattered an mystery to me because I realized it was something of it the here and now. And well, and yet I had never been brought up for it. It wasn't when I went to Royal College of Music in England. No, it wasn't a thing you, you know, jazz was not allowed, is it? Well, that sounds of, well, it's more or less true. Anyhow, that's another part of the story. And there were two discs of the old 78s, I suppose. And Francesca Allinson and I would sit together and play two of them, one after the other. And one of them was a wonderful piece of Hindemith, which was quite dry and, 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 and almost no emotions at all. And the other was Bessie Smith. You see, now, I mean, and it was a, hi a, hi a Hindemith trio he played himself. And we n somehow knew that both of us, I had it more probably very strongly, was a sense that, that this was two parts of, of, a, of a reality, in, of the artistic reality. Well, it so much intrigued me so much that I left the Hindemith. I didn't really explore that in musically in any particular way. But the Bessie Smith, I wanted that very, very deeply. 
There's a, there's a wonderful German thing called, it comes out from Goethe, who else? Um zu, um zu schaffen das Geschaffner. Um zu schaffen, it means to create again that already created and to remake it. See, and that is the everlasting activity, as he would put it. I'll sing the blues for me, maybe sing the blues for you. The black man sing the blues for Mr. Charlie. Well, I couldn't have invented the black man sings the blues for Mr. Charlie. That's taken directly out of, out of, out of, out of blue songs. So you had to sometimes take things as they were. I mean, you, and, 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 um, to shop and, and change it and to put it in somewhere else. You are. And so the, the, you don't ever, I never wrote the blues as such. I write my blues, but it had an element in it. And in that is, is that element of, well, we sing the blue, we we live in the state of perhaps of blues and somewhere and it's the one it seemed to me for a long time and it is true that the blues is the one thing which the twelve bar blues you know is is of absolutely of our t a century perhaps wasn't Gershwin one of your heroes oh yes one of the one of the great heroes to me musically. Summer time and the living is easy. Fish are jumping and the cotton is high. I don't know. Well, I, kn I know enough to know what that meant, why the fish were jumping and why the cotton was high. That's history. Yes, it is also one of the best tunes in the world, isn't it? That's what I mean. It's become something which is, is exactly become almost universal. I love fresh fruit after a meal, and at 79p a pound, these grapes are ideal. Price check at Summerfield and Gateway. <laughs> cornflakes. I know, sweetheart, but it's only a small site shop. A cornflakes? I know, I know. Kellogg's cornflakes, delicious flakes of corn drenched in ice cold milk. Mmm. I think it's going to last all week. Should do. It's a big enough box. Kellogg's cornflakes. Have you forgotten how good they taste? I've got a boring bath. New Johnson's Kids Foam Bath. Billions of bubbles that clean without drying to leave skin glowing. So for kids' cleaning power, jump into a Johnson's Kids Foam Bath. You can't kid a Johnson's Kid. For your Kuoni holiday to Hong Kong, pick up our worldwide brochure from your local travel agent or call this number. A partner teller's got his own way of getting rid of grease in the washing up. And I've got mine, new formula personal washing up liquid. Take it away, teller. Okay, the easy way is new formula personal. And to prove how easy it makes it, watch this. Its new formula dissolves grease even better than it did before. Great balls of fire! And it's much easier on the crockery. If it's greasy, it's easy <laughs> with new personal washing up liquid.
What about technology in your own work? Have you written music using the new electronic wizardry and gadgetry? No, I have not. In my, genera um, my generation, probably doesn't, and any, it wasn't in my line very much. And I had my own problems in the writing of music, and they came from my own uh, non-gifts and my other and my gifts, such as they were. But uh, difficult, because uh, you can add and add and, uh, the techniques if you want them. I mean, what I know, and I've said many times, and it's, uh, you can't help it, is that when something is put by me, my, with my literally with my hand in, onto a, a paper and a score, that is not the music. That is, that is instructions for people to play. And I try to make as precise as can be. I think that the uh, new generations have m uh, things that might make them more precise. I don't know, because I really haven't entered into it. On that sofa with you, there's a most wonderful sort of mad... Um, yes, that's what a, is it? That's a real toy. That's the latest thing that I have. And the voice, it is... In if we let it happen, you're here. You see, uh, uh, somebody brought me this because uh, the, uh, his children had them. So it's still your way of keeping in touch with literature. Still, and it is. I've, I've, it's the only thing. I, it, I haven't had it for very long. A couple of months, I suppose now. When? It, it really is my 90th birthday. You know, sort of my, my present to myself. So what then has? enhanced or, or um, widened, say, your life. Now, what about travel and the idea of a pony and cart and now you go by Concord? Well, y the, yes and no. You see, my hero has always, be, always been, sh been Shakespeare, I suppose. But all the world was, uh, was there in, hi in him. As he never, as far as we know, never travelled anywhere. But he read this voraciously, which was the means of communication of the period. But he didn't always get the geography right, wrong, wrong, whatever it is, but it didn't matter to hell. But I mean, the one that cheered me up was, was, was Milton, who was a lively character, went off to Italy, and actually looked through Galileo's telescope. And he realized perfectly well what the, some part of the New World was, and he knew that it wasn't, as he was brought up to believe. But when he, but he says quite clearly in Paradise Lost, for the purpose of writing Paradise Lost, he had to believe in, in the world as it wasn't. Interesting. Well, I'm quite prepared to do that if necessary, but I'm probably more interested in the world as it is because the discovery of the world, the world as it were, let alone universe, but I'm skeptical. And, you know, when I'm told that, you know, the first three minutes of the universe and the Big Bang, I always want to know what went off. And I asked that of one of the, one of, uh, the big bugs, and he said, well, I don't really know. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't. <laughs> I mean, the Big Bang, if, if it happened, as far as I know, happened in me. Well, you're asking me that question, aren't you? What enhanced it? The outside world, of course, it just does so. But the world of the imagination was bubbling away all the time. And it, you, I, you, I don't think I could ever get that solely by looking at the outside world, I mean, with, unless realizing the reflection of the outside world in myself. So that the world of dreams took over, from almost from the world, all the world go. What changed the world, I think, it was television. 
and, and communications of a different kind. They produce through the television what I call an sort of icon, modern icon. Well, the one that's moved me lately, on, and I can't forget it, and that I know only know through television, of this curious single figure in Tiananmen Square, you see. That's a single human being. very difficult, weaving before the tank. I mean, he couldn't weave forever, but there he is, some sort of single human being. I can't talk a lot about it because I, so I, I get it so affected. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely... Um, sentimental by nature, as well as being tough by nature. Those two things have got to be adapted. I mean, I can, I can create out of my own sentimentality, perhaps, something which is, has, that, has that element in it, but never has the other two, the absolutely craftsman that has to make and make and for us. There we are. One does. been a very brutal century. Do you, feel, do you feel that despite of it, do you have faith in human nature? Oh yes, I can't, I am unable to lose that faith. I see the world possibly, as a comedy once said through Rose Carter, skeptics. Well, I like skeptics. I do. And, uh, and I have enough of the other also. But I, I say, even the, even the concentration camps, whether they were in, wherever they were in, Ru in, in say, in Russia or in, or in, or in Germany or wherever, it was human beings who came in, as it were, to their rescue. And when you think of, of people who fell in love in, in, in whatever it is, one of the, the Polish one, it's unbelievable, Auschwitz. You see, and then this, this wonderful wonder thing. I came across something, and it's written. I wrote it down, and I've forgotten entirely where I got it. A question and answer, or a sort of statement. And this, the certain first one was: We planted daffodils in Auschwitz. And from Auschwitz is the sort of place where daffodils should be planted. Well, if you think what that metaphor yeah, says, you, we have to, I said, I would say, or I have to put the daffodils in. Do you think that's been neglected lately? Well, it's been more difficult, yes, politically, I think it has been. I think that was put it quite sharply, is where monetarism, so-called, put money before humans. And somehow, therefore, I, I would believe, I would use a, re a name, a real name, I would say that what Smith actually said at one point was, we as a party of the Labour people, whatever it's called now, we, we, this party must speak for those who can't speak for themselves. I have to sing songs for those who can't sing for themselves. And those songs become back the same thing all the time. They come out of the, out of even the torments that have happened and the hor horrors that have happened. I don't know, I can't, I can't lose faith in humanity. Because it's, well, no, I cannot. Do you have a, 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 an idea of utopia? Have I got a utopia? What an uh, in, intriguing thought. 
I think then I, I mean, I then we get into very different all questions of jargon. It isn't a utopia of that kind. It's if it, it's to do with no. You're always you're always here, upon upon here now. Quote again from within this theatre, upon this stage. We tra oh, no, we sense the magic net that holds us veined. Each to each to all, come unto these yellow sands. I don't know. Now that's, all sorts of things have gone into the making of that little bit of text, and uh, all, the, all sorts of things went into the making of the music to it. And in that is contained this, this thing, it's, it's always for me, here, now, upon this theatre this stage. Why do we need the arts? Oh, because they bring something in, bring, bring the imaginative world in, which we need, we being everybody, all humans. We need to, f we need to, to make something which lives on after us, at one side of it, which is the, the work of art, which is which goes on after your after our death, by being anyone at all, or whatever, and that these are, as you call it, these I call it, death in life and life in death, meaning that that was the point. He, he it was there as an artifact made by human hands, actually an artifact as such. Well, then now it can be all sorts of, of artifacts, whether it's music, which is a very strange one, I mean, it's a very mysterious one, or others which are perhaps less or more mysterious, but they are there, they, we go, we go on pilgrimages to see them. You go, if you want to, you try and go and see the Mona Lisa or anything else of, of that kind, or you go and hear early music or whatever. And it can't, it can't be stopped, and we, we do it because we need it. Though I don't know we would use the word we need it. We want it, we enjoy it. Joy helps you a bit, but it's rather deeper than that, I think, probably. Does it fill a void? Is there a void? Would there be a void without it, the arts? Well, you can't have it without it. That's the real thing. It is a fact, it's, it's, it part, it is I don't know, it is part of the universe. I, do, I can't tell you any more than that because it, 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 uh, it can't be avoided because it can never go. It can never die. Everyone suddenly started singing and I was filled with such delight as prison birds. We feel in, in freedom. Weeing wildly across the green fields and white orchards out far away, way and out of sight. Well, yeah. And then in the end, the, the singing may stop, but it can't stop really. Singing will never be done. We shall sing always. The joy, tears of sorrow, tears of joy.